In this particular lecture, let's learn what exactly is state in React and more specifically, even before that, let's learn why state is required. So even before learning state, let's answer the question like, why do you need state? So right now in our application, whenever we want to handle some data, we are using props. However, the fundamental problem with props is that props are immutable. That means the data inside the prop cannot be changed. But what if you actually want to change some data in the component? What if you want to have some value which could change dynamically inside a component when some event happens or when something else in your application changes? We obviously cannot do that with props. And therefore, in order to have some data which changes when some action happens, what we do is we use state. So fundamentally, state in React is nothing but it's an object which is going to hold the data related to a specific component. And the value of state could be dynamically changed throughout the life cycle of a component as well. So what is a state? So a state is nothing but it's an object which holds the information which controls behavior of a component. So as I earlier mentioned, the reason why we want the data to be dynamic is that whenever the data changes, we also want to change the behavior of the component as well. And that's only possible using state because props are something which cannot be changed. So even before learning about state or taking a practical example of state in React, let's compare and contrast props versus state. So props are usually passed to the component. We have already taken an example of that. However, state is not passed to a component, but instead it's actually contained inside the component. So you do not create a state and then you pass it to some component, but instead the state is already present inside of a component. So the state kind of like is a state of a component which stores information about that component. The next thing is props are immutable. It cannot be changed. Whereas the sole purpose of having state inside a component is that it could be changed and states also influence the behavior of a component as well. The third thing is props are like parameters passed to a function, whereas state is like a variable declared inside a function body. Now to understand props and state in a much more better way, you could consider an example of a regular JavaScript function. So in a JavaScript function, you have external parameters or arguments which are actually passed to the function, which provides the function some data externally, whereas a state is like a local variable which is declared inside the function body. So a state is actually contained inside a component, whereas props are something which the component receives from outside. So props and state both contain the data, but the only difference is the data for the props do not change. The data inside a state could be changed. The next thing is props actually provide external data to the component, whereas a state actually provides internal data to a specific component. And it kind of makes sense for props to be immutable because props are actually providing data from outside the component. So that means the component which is receiving that particular data should not be able to change it. That means if we want to change the data inside a component, rather than using props, we need to use state. So in order to understand state in a much more better way, in the next lecture, let's take an actual example. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.